Hi, and welcome to this video on doing AL development with uh, Business Central, getting started with AL development on Business Central. I'm Eric, and uh, in this video, I'm going to take you through what you need to set up and just get to the point where you can write your first line of code. Um, let's get right into it. Um, I have a Business Central here. Uh, the Business Central is running in the cloud. Uh, this is a cloud sandbox. I actually have another business central. So if I go here and I go to so nav, I have called it nav daily two slash BC. Here's another um, business central. So one of them, the first one is in the cloud. You can see it by the URL. The second one is not in the cloud. You can also see that by uh, in the URL. The second one is located right here so it's running on my local machine as a docker image we can see that it's not very easy to read the docker output sometimes let me actually make this very wide see this is called nav daily it has an ip address and uh, we can say ping nav daily two there it is so this Docker image is created with something called the nav container helper, uh, something that Freddy from Microsoft wrote. You can look on freddysblog.com to read all about the, uh, the the nav container helper and how to use it and stuff like that. Um, but I have created this instance of BC with that. So I, right now, so we have two different BCs. We have cloud version and we have an on-prem version. Or, a Docker container version. It can actually be an on-prem or a cloud sandbox uh, in a Docker image. Um, the next bit we need is Visual Studio Code. Uh, and I have one of those too, it's right here. Um, in order for Visual Studio, so Visual Studio Code is just a, a fancy text editor on steroids. Um, and one of we need one of the steroids. So if we go into extensions here, um, we can see that I have a bunch of extensions enabled in my uh, in my Visual Studio Code. Anything from support from the Rust language to Windows subsystem for Linux remoting, Python, and Markdown, and uh, tons of stuff here. Um, the only thing we actually need for, for 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 doing AL development is the extension called AL Language from Microsoft, um, and this one is already installed. If if I was in this for the first time, I could search for AL Language uh, here. I will find it, and there will be an install. I can just like on the other ones here. Uh, you install it, and you're ready to go. So after you have installed the extension, the first thing you, you would want to do is a command called algo. Um, and how do you do commands? Well, there's a diff different ways you can do, do this. Inside uh, Visual Studio Code, you can open the command palette, either from here or with Control Shift P. If you do Control Shift P, uh, that's like an easy one you can find. You type AL and you'll find AL Go. So AL Go is basically the command that will generate a new project. I do AL Go and I type in a path. So so what we're, we're adding now, and if I'm able to spell, but probably not. Um, what we're what we're typing here is a folder that do not exist so uh, it, you you don't want to enter a folder as always well. you have to it, it it says that choose the path to a new empty folder so some type in something that doesn't exist you hit enter and you're asked what is the target platform so there we if we came from, if you came from the nav world there were multiple versions and uh, now the business central ha also have a version but they also have like a, a like a release name so right now we are on on 2020 wave one 
Um, but behind the scenes, there's also a runtime version. And and the runtime version was sort of reset by NAV 2018. So NAV 2018 is version zero from a runtime perspective. And we are now currently at version five, this, the, the spring 2020 release. So I'll just say that, hey, this is version five. So this is also known as version 16. Uh, so the code, the, the build up Business Central is actually version 16. So it can be a bit confusing. So the next thing that happens here is that please choose the server. And, and I have two options. I have a Microsoft Cloud Sandbox or your own server. I will do the Cloud Sandbox to start. Um, so I get a, a file called the launch.json. The launch.json is the one that connects your Visual Studio code to whatever instance of Business Central you, you want to connect to. So I clicked on something, let me click back here. The first thing I want to do before anything is to make sure that I'm actually connecting to the right uh, sandbox in the cloud. So when you have a a business center running in the cloud, you can have production and multiple sandboxes. All these are called environments. And uh, you want to make sure that you're accessing the right one. So if I go back to my browser for a second and I find the URL, I can see that there's this good sitting here. This is actually my tenant ID. So I will go back into this one and then I will add, I'll, I'll actually just type TE and the IntelliSense will give me a suggestion. Do you want to type tenant I want? And I want to add this one. Then I'll do one more thing. So I'll say that I'm currently working towards the sandbox, call sandbox. It's not very, uh, easy. I should have called it something else, but I have a sandbox and the sandbox is called sandbox. I could have created another sandbox called UAT or whatever name I want, but this sandbox is called sandbox. So at this point I could also uh, say that uh, this is Eric's uh, cloud sandbox. Now I can press the com go into the command palette in control shift P and I can go to ask to download symbols. So what we, the first thing you need to do after we're connecting to something is, we, is to ask the server that we're talking with, uh, what objects do you have? What's in your database? Can be, Because if you want to program against the customer table, you need to know what fields are in the customer table and so on. We get that from the symbols. So as soon as we we do something, everything happens down in the uh, the lower right pane here. And then this one tells us to go to web browser and open the page to this one and enter in the code. So we'll do that. I type in the code, it's actually pasted, uh, copied into the, uh, the clipboard automatically. And I select the user I'm using. And now my Visual Studio code is connected to that specific instance that we have specified here. And you can see it's sending three requests and a new folder appeared here with three new files. These are they also extensions by by but they're just simple extensions telling me what's actually on the server. So at this point I could go control uh, shift B and do a build. And this will compile my, uh, my, my project here. This is called the packet is created. We have a new default publish of video three, one point zero 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 dot app app. So at this point we have an app, uh, right now, the only thing that's in the app is the hello world thing here. Um, that says app publish. So we'll just change this one and say, uh, hello from video. Oh, hello to all of YouTube. There you go. And, and this time I will not just compile, I'll press a five. If five is compile and deploy. And now it cached my credentials because we just I, I typed in and tied my business central to the, the Visual Studio code. So it, the, the credentials are cached and we're ready. So 
Hvis you still the code will launch a new browser tab, and we can see that it, it hello to all of YouTube. So our extension clearly worked. So what happened here is that it starts up on the customer list. If I go back in here, I can see that in my launch file where we, we change these things, we have a startup object ID, which means that we want to start on page number 22. And that happens to be the customer list. You can specify another page if you want to. Um, so now we have Visual Studio Code connected to a Cloud Sandbox. We have created an extension. We're ready to go. Um, we have seen the launch JSON and we have seen the small uh, page extension with a, with a message. So there's one more file here. It's called the app.json. The app.json file is the file that describes your project. Uh, so right now my extension is called video three and I'm called default publisher. I don't want to be default publisher. I want to be myself. There we go. I could change the version number. I could put a description and logo. It also defines what dependencies we have. And these are dependencies that, that will get pulled as AL packages. Um, also tells what object numbers I want to program in, if I want to program something else and what runtime I'm running against. So. All done, we're, we're good here, but let's do one more thing. Let's go back to launch JSON and then click on the, and, and now I'm actually, you can see that I'm just going to move myself a bit down here on the, under me, there's the add configuration. So I'll add configuration and then I will add a AL publish to your own server. And while I remember it, I will just put myself back into the corner. There we go. Um, and I'll I'll change this one. Say uh, th this one will be the um, the nav uh, nav daily two server. So that's the name we're gonna put in here. Nav daily two, and the server instance is just called BC. Now, if I go, so, so as soon as we touch something, we'll get a file called settings.json. And, and this one will have a, a saying, say, hey, the default launch configuration is the cloud sandbox. I'll delete that, save here, and then I'll set, ask to deploy. Now it's, it's ask me, choose the server you want to deploy to. So in this case, I'll not do a cloud sandbox. We just did that. I'll deploy to the nav daily two. So nav daily two have a different authentication module. And because I have communicated with my visual studio in general, before I did this video, uh, it will not ask me for credentials, but otherwise it would ask me for a credential and success. This one is also deployed to that sandbox. It takes a minute. Hello to all of YouTube. And you can see that now we're on the nav daily two. So let's, let's recap here for a second. Um, we have sandboxes. We either a, a Docker or a local installed sandbox or a cloud sandbox. We have Visual Studio Code installed with the AL language uh, extension and we have created a project with AL Go. We have, co have connected that project to both our sandboxes and we have compiled and deployed. So from here on, we're ready to develop. And with that, I think this video is done. So follow me on Twitter, subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel if you want to get notified when I'm creating the next video. And until next time, have fun.